we started by getting a quadratic and uh, I asked you to graph y equals f of x. What I want us to think about now, this is the first thing. Secondly, um, we know what happens when we do absolute values, right? Do you remember how um, in your previous lesson we said if you take the absolute value of this, see these positive parts, they'll just stay where they are. But what happens to this negative part, this little bottom of the curve? Yeah, Rasen. Yeah, um, yeah, this is going to like flip um, upwards. Bottom. Yeah, so instead of this being down at, oh, I should have, we should have marked this in, shouldn't we? Um, this is at negative two and a half and um, negative a quarter. Right? So there's the vertex. Instead of being at negative a quarter, it's going to be at positive a quarter. It kind of like flips up like this. Right? So that's one of the transformations you can do, just slapping absolute value signs on it. We're going to do one that's slightly different. We're going to use the algebra to help us. Okay? Uh, so if, if I had the absolute value, which I'm not, that was last lesson, but this negative part down here would kind of look like a little bump going upwards. All right. uh, did that ring a bell? Yeah, you know how it like sort of bounces? So that was just like what we saw before. Now what I want us to graph is this guy. It's similar, but different. Okay. Now, you might remember seeing things like this when we were looking at odd and even functions. Do you remember that? We would put in negative x, we would substitute in negative x everywhere we saw x, and we would see what happened. Right? What I want us to do is to put in negative x everywhere you see x, and then draw this new graph. It's going to look different to this. Okay. I want you to put in y equals, and now replace all your x's with negative x's. You get a new equation. Go ahead, factorize that just like you did before. Find the vertex and the intercepts. Have a go. It often is, but it doesn't have to be, right? So you know, at the moment, like you've been drawing Cartesian planes for years now, and we always call this guy x. We always kind of call this guy y, but it doesn't have to be an x. It could be a, anything else. Yeah, same equation here, right? So maybe I'll start you off by making sure your actual expression you're going to get out of this is correct. If I put in a negative x everywhere I saw x, I'm going to write this. Do you see what I've done? It's just a straight swap for everywhere I saw an x, like here and here. I'm going to put in a minus x. Now, I want you to take that, expand that out, and treat it just like you did before. You're going to try and factorize that, use that to find the intercepts, use that to find your vertex. OK, off you go. See how far you can get. OK, now, I didn't give you as much time to have a look at that one as I did the first one. But that's because you might be starting to sense some real similarities. Very good, sir. We'll come to that point in a second. Let's just do the, let's do the work to get there, because not everyone's at the same point, right? Just have a look quickly first at our substitution, right? So I swapped our x's for negative x's. This is what I got when I expanded out my brackets. And then, just like before, my first instinct is to factorize, right? What's the factorization for this guy? Minus x minus 2 and, three. and x minus 3. Right. Which you might think, oh, hold on, this looks familiar, doesn't it? But there's a subtle difference, OK? Instead of my roots being at negative 2 and negative 3, my roots are at? 2 and 3. Yeah, just 2 and 3. They're on the positive side, right? So just like before, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. Now, then I think, OK, I've got an intercept here, an intercept here. By the way, as I've been walking around, and I'm sure Mrs. Lee has been noticing this as well, please watch out for the consistency of your scale. A whole lot of you, your distance between uh, 2 and 3 might be the same as your distance between 0 and 2, which it shouldn't be because those distances are different, right? So please watch out for that. I've got 2 and I've got 3. The next thing I did was my y-intercept. Can you tell me the y-intercept? Six. It's still 6. Huh, that's funny. And then you go ahead, you find your vertex, and what you may have found should have looked very suspiciously familiar, right? What did you get as the coordinates of the vertex? Uh, same, as the other same as the other one with one difference. Uh, yeah, the x value, well, the x value over here is between the intercepts, and your x value over here is between the intercepts, but they're somewhere else, right? So you're getting this guy down here, the y value is still negative a quarter just like before, right? So what you've got is, I'm going to do my very best. There we go. Happy times, okay? Now just one quick note before I leave off discussing this, I should put some values here and here and here. Um, you can see one of the things that I always watch out for is the overall shape of the parabola. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the common errors that I'm seeing some people do, don't draw this, please, um, is that when your parabola kind of goes toward the edge, right, you sort of like, oh no, I'm running out of space on my graph, and it kind of like does this. 
That's a really big no-no. Um, we've got all these other great features on the graph that you've done accurately, but this is not the shape of a parabola, right? It never kind of levels off like that. It keeps on getting steeper and steeper forever. If you cannot fit onto your graph to do that, don't draw the rest of the graph. Right? Just actually take off part of it so it doesn't do the wrong thing. Better to do nothing than the wrong thing. This is what it's supposed to do. Same deal over here. Are you okay with the shape there? Yeah. yeah. I could probably clean this up a little bit. If I had done this on paper, I would have done it in pencil first. Then I'd go over it in pen once I'm happy with the shape. Okay. Now this was the point of this, right? And we're starting to come to where we can actually write the heading. What is the relationship between this graph over here? This is y equals f of x. negative x. This guy is the graph of y equals f of x, right? What's the relationship between these two? Saran kind of called out right at the beginning, but I want to articulate it more carefully for all of us, right? What have we done to turn that graph, if you just ignore the algebra, if I wiped off all the algebra here, and you had to give someone an instruction to turn graph number one into graph number two, what would you tell them? Suppose there was no algebra, right? If we're just looking at the pictures. Nishan, what do you think? Reflected. Have a look at the shape, right? Some of you actually, can you hold your, can I borrow your book actually? Now, uh, I, didn't, I didn't give you any specific instructions on this. I'm just going to delicately hide this graph because it's not what you want to show us, right? Uh, Perrin did a big enough graph that he could fit both of them on the same set of axes, which is kind of convenient. I didn't tell you to do this, but you can actually see the relationship really clearly here, can't you? Here's the original. And this is the one you did, right? You're like, oh, same y intercept right there. Okay, your x-intercepts have gone from negative 2, negative 3 to positive 2 and 3, right? Same y-coordinate for the vertex as well. It's the same shape, but as Ashan just said, and he said it exactly right, there's a reflection across the, across what? Y the y-axis. Can we, thank you, can we write that down, right? f of negative x, right? Let's write this down, I think we can fit it in underneath, okay? f of negative x, or y equals, sorry, I should say, y equals f of negative x is a reflection across, across which line? Across the, across the y-axis, so vertically, right? Across the y-axis of whatever we started with, which is y equals f of x. Okay, you can see that we crunched through the algebra, we found all the same features, but now that you know this fact, right, if you know what f of x looks like, you don't even know, need to know what the equation is. If they ask you, can you now graph f of negative x, well you're going to grab that, right, and you're going to flip it over to the other side. 